Take it, mate. And a thrilling finish to a thrilling series. How important for you that it ended in that way and how are you feeling emotionally? Um, yeah, I think just the series as a whole, as I said, outside to others, I think 2-2 two, two generally is a fair reflection of, um, you know, two very, very good teams going at it over a five-match series. Um, you know, obviously Australia being World Test champions and um, leading into the Sasha series, the the cricket that I think has been on show has been you know of the highest quality um, being 2-0 down obviously a very hard task to come back for and to be sat here saying that we've managed to to level the series knowing that we obviously had to win the the last three games um, game in Manchester obviously was affected by rain but you know that is what it is but you know coming here and um, playing in the the way in which we did um, I couldn't be any more proud of the team and and what they did, um, you know, just we continued everything in the style of play in which we've we've done over the last 14 to 15 months, um, and yeah, it's it's basically been been everything that I think I could have asked for, minus uh, getting the end back. How will you remember Stuart Broad as a Test cricketer? How much will you and the team now miss him? Do you think? Um, well, for me, Stuart Stuart's more than just a uh, person I walk out into the field with. Um, I played a lot of cricket with him. You know, there's only a handful of test matches where he's not played in, which I've done. Um, you know, when he announced his retirement, and <laughs> I told my wife that this is going to be his last game, uh, she was like, "Oh, like Brody is is the one who messaged me saying that Ben's got home safe after a after a good night out after we've won a test match." So. She doesn't have that anymore, so it's going to be someone else, probably Ruti. But um, yeah, look, Brody's been a massive um, advocate for fast bowlers in terms of his longevity, what he's achieved, the amount of wickets he's done. Um, I think he's an inspiration to many people who want to make a career out of cricket and being a fast bowler. Um, you know, 100 and 60 odd test matches is not an easy thing to be able to do as a bowler and you know he definitely should be someone that people look up to if they if they want to have a successful career in international cricket being a bowler he's just been incredible I know people will always look back on the certain moments in his career but he's he's definitely better than that but he's he's someone who has produced unbelievable moments on the field but you know you can't pigeonhole him to someone who's who's only produced certain things at certain moments because 600 and was it 608 test wickets 604 um, is something that he should be very very proud of and how confident are you that you can fill the void he leaves what sort of strength and depth do you think you have going forward as, as this attack evolves yeah I think the way in which we've sort of had to chop and change our bowling order because of certain things you know obviously the the unfortunate injury to, to Popey actually brought Wokesy in. Um, and I don't know if there's ever been a player who's only featured in three games in the National Series to walk away with Man of the Series has ever been done before. Um, Josh Tong coming in and only playing one game, the impact that he had, but obviously the game against Ireland he did incredibly well. Um, Matthew Potts, again, you know, got a chance last summer and, and proved that he's everything um, that a uh, test bowler is so you know we're not at a lack of um, talent and skill to, to come in and hopefully replace that void that Stuart's obviously going to leave but he's definitely going to be definitely going to be missed not only for his performance out on the field but also in the dressing room we've got a few getters so we're each going forward so we'll go Rory Will and then Mel please Ben you've um, said to us before about people shouting you on from the streets go on lads you know we're really enjoying it you've talked to us about a fella coming up to you in the changing room at the spa and said he's never watched never watched cricket before. Watching the scenes just there, the crowd sort of blowing up like in excitement. Do you do you get the feeling that quite aside from not getting the urn in your hand today, 
that you've lit a rocket under this sport in this country? Um, yeah, I definitely think so. And I've obviously been, been very vocal around that sort of separation from the, the results thing with cricket. Uh, I definitely think that over the last seven weeks in particular that we've managed to sort of drag a new audience towards Test Cricket. And I think the series is generally what Test Cricket needed. Um, two high quality teams going out at toe to toe for six, seven weeks. And the cricket that's been played has been something that you really couldn't take your eyes off. You know, it's not been, every session has been its own sort of game, if that makes sense. Um, you know, we've been in control, Australia have been in control in different ways. Um, and I think everyone who's turned up here, well, turned up to the games and bought a ticket has really enjoyed their days of cricket. And I guess that's sort of all you can really ask for is someone who, who pays money to come and watch an international sport. And yeah, I really hope that we've inspired sort of a new generation. You know, I look back to 2005 and what that series did for me as a young person. And I really hope there's someone at my age in 2005 who's looked at this series and said, that's what I want to be doing when I'm, you know, 21, 22. Will, Mel and Barrett. Ben, um, you said that your only regret from the um, first three tests, I think, was, was dropping Nathan Lyon. Can you explain what happened today with Steve Smith and what was going through your head? when that happened? Uh, yeah, so um, the review, I reviewed it and I went straight to Kumar and I said, look, I think I've reviewed that on third umpire determining if it was a fair catch or not. I personally wasn't sure if it was. Um, everyone who said he's hit it was sort of just all turned around to the umpire and didn't actually sort of see what had happened. Um, so I went straight up to Kumar and said, this review was based on this being a fair catch or not, because I'm not sure if it is. Um, yeah, so that's that was the whole thing around. I mean, the fact that I had to review it after it was determined that it wasn't a fair catch was something that was for a discussion. But um, that was the whole basis around that, as that I actually personally wasn't sure if you know the if it was control catch at the time. Um, normally, it's my left knee that I'm pissed off at, but today it was my right knee. No. Um, ben, do you think it's possible to channel a backs to the wall mentality when your backs aren't to the wall? Is that possible? Uh, sorry, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, it's, it's, so you talk about backs to the wall mentality and when we were at Lords and you said we're in the perfect position. And the way you were, you were kind of right, weren't you? Because that's from then it was an incredible run. Is it possible to actually channel the things that you got right when your backs were to the wall and the performances that that brought on when your backs aren't to the wall when you're not mm. in a position where you've got to win every game? If that makes sense. Um, yeah, well, I think that that's just sort of naturally how we play. I think you look at day one, you lose a toss, you get put in to bat. Um, and that's almost, I definitely think the, the wicket on day one is when the sort of the most assistance was for the bowlers. Um, you know, we scored 280 at over five runs and over against a high quality attack. Um, and I, I personally don't think we sort of changed the way in which we operate as a batting unit. Um, you know, you could say, you know, could we been a little bit more reserved and gone into day two and looked to build a few more runs or something like that. But, you know, 280 on a wicket like that, I think we actually did a good job. And if anything, scoring as quickly as we did allowed us an opportunity to still be able to bowl in those conditions with 280 runs on the board. I thought Australia, the openers in particular, played very well in both innings this game. You know, Dave and, and Usman. Um, in the first innings put on a good stand yet again they put another good innings on in the fourth innings so um, that's how I sort of looked to see it I thought we were in a good position when we got bowled out on day one to still be able to use those conditions in our favour but when you're bowling at two high quality only batsmen you know you're going to have to to be on it you know throughout the whole duration to, to be able to take that wicket George and the lady from the Australian. Um, ben, uh, you spoken a lot about uh, this in the last 12 months, about the way England play and how important it is for Test cricket in this country. But is there a bigger picture to it? I mean, do you think the way you guys are playing uh, will change Test cricket 
globally and do you think that should happen uh, going forward? Uh, I've sort of been asked this question you know, in different ways quite a few times and I'll stick to that what we're trying to do um, I think is, is unfair for me to sit here and say this is how other teams should play. If other teams take that upon themselves to sort of take inspiration from the way in which we're playing to, I don't know, maybe benefit them, then great. But, you know, I, I don't think I'd ever say that every other nation should be playing in the way in which we do because every team is full of different individuals and uh, different styles of play bring out the best in individuals and teams. But the way in which we play brings the best out of our individuals and us as a whole team collective. Um, given where England were when you took over and um, sort of going back to the Caribbean tour I think was it 1-17 or whatever it was and sort of scoring at 2-0 and over or whatever it was in Grenada as well H have you almost surprised yourself how quickly you made progress I don't think there's been a series loss since then and are you confident I mean of course you're going to keep doing this in India uh, is this a, a method that can work equally well there as it has here I remember when we beat New Zealand 3-0, it was, we couldn't do it against South Africa, couldn't do it against Pakistan, uh, couldn't do it against Australia, so who knows if we can do it against India. Only time will tell. Um, no, I don't think so because I knew that I had the um, personnel to be able to actually go out and implement the style of cricket that I sort of wanted us to play. Um, you know, the, the squad in itself hasn't actually been too different from before I took over captaincy. Um, it was just about me identifying uh, the, the way in which I thought we could get the best out of the players which we had. Um, and I think over the last 12 to 14 months, it's, you've seen it work and it's been very, very, very consistent. Uh, ben, if I can just take you back uh, an hour ago when you were on the outfield and uh, Pat Gummings was getting the little urn, what was going through your head at the time? Uh, not a lot, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I think I was just chatting to, the, to my teammates, to be honest. Um, but what were you feeling? I mean, you've just won the game, but yet you have not won the Ashes. Yeah, we won the game, so I was pretty happy. Um, but ben, do you feel vindicated by what's happened? Because at times in the series, there, there, were, there were moments like at Lords of the Hooking where former players and critics have criticised you guys for taking too many risks, but you basically stuck to your guns completely throughout. Is, is, is it very much an um, all-in approach, and do you feel vindicated by what's happened? Uh, well, I think if you look at the success over the amount of games that we've played, that the style obviously works. Um, yeah, we've been very successful. Um, you know, um, criticism is, is part and parcel with everything that you do. Um, but obviously, the most and the most important views and the most important opinions that um, we view and that I view as a leader is the opinions of people around me and the people that I'm trying to speak to 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 sort of get the the output that you see. Um, I think when you see performances in particular in this series, that that's the vindication, not vindication of um, people outside of our little bubble. I don't mean that in any disrespectful way whatsoever, but um, being in a team sport, the most people, the most important people that um, you worry about are the people within your dressing room. We've got Mike, Vish, Kit, and we'll finish with Stefan. Uh, ben, Wokes and Mo were terrific today, but in the back of your mind, did you always think that somehow Brody would have the last word and provide that Hollywood finish because it was just perfect, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I, I'm not going to lie, in the back of my mind, when we got to the position we did when they were eight down, um, it would be an almighty can't swear here, be an almighty train wreck if we didn't win that game. There we go. Um, so yeah, I thought I chose my moment quite well to bring Brody back into the attack. Um, two left-handers, you've seen the way in which he bowls at left-handers. He's been incredibly successful and 
yeah, that was just his moment. Um, he had a lot of plays and misses in his first two, three overs of that spell. And I just kept saying, just keep bowling the same ball over and over and over again because you'll eventually get the wicket. Um, and yeah, to watch him get that last wicket, albeit I was at long, long on and I didn't actually know what was going on. I thought it was another play and miss because Brody carries on like he's nicked everyone off when there's a play and miss. So, but obviously seeing him run off and then all the slips go up and celebrate and stuff like that, it was just one of those moments where you're like, like this was just always going to happen when we got to that stage of the game. Fish, Adam, Stefan, and Dad. <coughs> Hi, Ben. Um, I feel like when you ask everyone in the squad who their favourite player is in terms of talent with bat and ball, they always say Chris Wokes. Um, Molly, uh, Stuart Broad's partner, said her favourite cricketer was Chris Wokes, but it feels like he's never really got his moment in the sun when it comes to Test cricket. You know, and, and now he's player of the series in the Ashes. Can you talk about, I suppose, just him as a person and a uh, player and why you all admire him so much? Yeah, look, Wokes, he's, I guess, when he's not playing anymore, it will sort of be, if, if he wasn't in the era of Stuart Broad and James Anderson, he sort of would have been a more consistent in the England team, but um, he's always been a player in which that we've seen him playing a part, um, even when I took over, uh, just because of what he adds, you know, his, his ability with the ball, his ability with a bat to have someone like that at number eight is, you know, valuable. Um, he's been amazing with the ball this series, obviously, but, you know, you look at his, his runs, he's got lower down the order. Um, you know, the runs he got at Headingley um, was, you know, a massive reason as to why he won the game. And, you know, to play three games in the series and walk away with Manor series, I think, proves just how good of a cricketer he is. Um, he's a massive team man um, and someone who um, should never be underestimated for his contributions to English cricket. Um, you know, he might not have got the opportunities that a lot of people would have think he would have got, but that's purely because he's been in the era of James Anderson and Stuart Broad. But every time he's walked out for England, he's given absolutely everything. Um, and this series in particular, I think he'll be very, very proud of what he's managed to achieve. Um, and I'm very proud of him for coming in and later on in the series and putting in the performances that he's done because He's been a massive reason as to why we're sat here talking about us, you know, drawing the series 2-2 after being 2-0 down. You said that when he came, you know, when you brought him in and he asked you, you know, what do you need for me? And you were like, don't worry about it, I'll set the fields. Um, have you been able to have a word with him afterwards and I suppose, I don't know, thank him, congratulate him for, for what he's achieved? Um, yeah, obviously he bowled, I don't know how many overs he bowled in that spell after the break, but, you know, was it three wickets or four wickets in that spell? Um, and then when he stopped bowling, um, I just said to him, I said, you've been a massive reason as to why we're in this position right now. Um, and he just wasn't having a bar of it. He was like, let's, let's just get it done. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's just been, he's been awesome for us. Um, just quality cricketer. Adam? Ben, um, just a word and more actually from texting him what, seven weeks ago to walking off there with Brody. I mean, how do you sum up that comeback and would you even consider asking him again? Uh, well, he's pretty much said he'll delete my message, hasn't he, if I send him another one. So, uh, yeah, I won't waste my time on that. Um, but look, I said Mo, Mo got picked because I knew what he could do on his, on his best days. Um, and today was his best day um, in this Ashes series. Um, and what a day to, to produce that. I thought he bowled so, so well. You know, when you look at the way in which he tied Steve Smith up, not only to be able to restrict him from scoring, but looking so threatening against a very, very, very good player of spin. Um, you know he's bowled well. Um, and yeah, he took some wickets today, which changed the game constantly. Um, so yeah, when, when you have the, the belief in someone that on their best days, they can win you a game, today sum that up for, for most selection and you know just putting his hand up and saying I want to go out and bat number three um, I sort of want to put my stance on the series um, I don't think there's a lot more that, that you could ask for out of messaging someone after an injury to one of your more key players to come in and put the performance he's done very very good Steph uh, ben, I just wonder if you could talk about maybe what you personally have been through over the past six or seven weeks, if I don't know, the mental toll or 
energy of captaining in an Ashes series is different to when you're captaining against other teams. And if I know with a bit of luck with the fitness, if it's whetted the appetite to have another crack in a couple of years' time, you know, down under pretty much the ultimate test for, for any England captain. There's been a lot of 6.30 wake-ups at day four and day five, um, when my alarm's been set for 8.15. Um, yeah, it just adds a different dimension to the whole game, doesn't it? Um, I remember as a player being in big games and, you know, sort of big days in a, in a test match where it's, you know, this day will define the, the game itself and you just sort of, you don't have to worry about it except being a player, but obviously being a captain, your, your mind goes to different places. But um, I personally feel I've handled it all quite well. Um, and I think I've stuck to myself as a person, myself as a personality around the group. Um, I'm obviously a very optimistic person and try to keep the dressing room as optimistic as I possibly can. Um, and that comes from experience, you know, playing a lot of test cricket um, and being involved in a lot of situations like that as a player and not as a captain. Um, I think that actually helped me in some of the big moments within these last three games. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty proud in terms of the way I've handled, you know, the sort of pressure situations in some of these games. Dan Brenn, last one, please. Hi Ben, um, just one about the overall experience of playing Australia in 2023 as opposed to, I guess, in some past Ashes series. Like, does this does this series feel like it was played as much on, I suppose, skill and nerve rather than, you know, how much you're going to get distracted by what you might get said to you on the field, that, that kind of thing? Like, is it, is it different now to in the past? I think that's just the progression of franchise cricket, to be honest. Um, there's a lot of players who have, you know, relationships with the opposition now, you know, not just England and Australia, but other teams around the world. Um, you know, especially in particular, obviously the IPL, you know, you can spend nine weeks with someone who, um, you know, you, you'll play against. Like I'd spent two or three years at Rajasthan with Steve, Steve Smith. So, um, you know, you, you get to know each other and, and kind of stuff like that. But when it comes down to it with bat and ball, it's obviously yourself against the opposition and, um, you know that he wants to smack you for four and he knows that he wants to get you out um, but I think just the natural progression of how where franchise cricket has taken players from all across the world to actually be able to spend time together and understand each other more is a reason as to why you're probably not going to see the um, sort of aggression and um, sort of I don't know stuff out in the middle that you might have seen from previous Ashes series um, I think that's that's probably a big reason why yeah. Thank you. Cheers, man. Sweet. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>